Hi everyone, uh, we've got Meet the Technical Team. Steph is the one representing. He'll introduce the rest of the team and enjoy the talk. Over Thank to you. you Steph. <laughs> Hi, so um, I'm the only one here from the, from the Technical Committee, but there are a handful of other people and they're on a Jitsi call, so if I can get this to behave. They're there, you can wave at them on the screen. Um, I will give an introduction talk with some slides, and then we will switch to Q&A, and um, maybe there'll be some more involvement from the rest of the committee. Switch back to, right. Come on. I'm a relatively new committee member. Um, I probably wouldn't giving this, be giving this talk, except I'm the only one here. Um, that is the current committee. And I think everyone is, was expected to be in the call except for Matthew. Um, we would like to thank our past committee members. There have been a few over the years. A, a few years ago we started a term limit, which meant there's a little more turnover in the committee and it's less of a, well, it might have been a bit of an old boys club in the early days. Um, yes, I'd like, really like to thank all of them for their hard work over the years, it has been. The technical committee ends up with a lot of Debian's harder problems. Um, we, the role of the committee is defined in the Debian constitution, and it says that as the committee we decide on any matter of technical policy, we decide on any matter where developers' jurisdictions overlap. So generally in Debian, packages belong to the maintainer of the package, services belong to the maintainer of the service, there are other delegated things. And when people collide, but they are in charge of their own area, somebody needs to resolve that conflict, and that the technical committee ends up being asked to help make the technical decisions to resolve that conflict. So the powers that we have to do that are to break ties in um, when people can't come to a consensus or agreement, and to overrule a developer when, as a committee, we decide that while they are responsible for their area of the project, we disagree with them, and for the benefit of the project, we would like them to implement. I can't think of what, quite what the right wording is there, but. Um, what they're doing needs to change. And to do that, that needs a three to one majority in the committee. It's really a last resort option. We try not to do it. Our preference is to be able to offer the advice to people in the Debian project that need to decide on technical issues, especially when it's a large project-wide issue and not just something within their own area. The constraints of our role in the, as defined in the Constitution are that we have to have our discussions in public and our decision making in public. We can't make the decision in private and then just have a sham um, public part for the process purposes. We really do need to make the decisions in public. We shouldn't get caught up in the detailed design work. We are largely trying to, de to decide between designs that have been proposed by other project members and only as a last resort when the project can't come to a consensus without us. So constitutionally, we're breaking ties amongst available options, and only after the efforts to solve it by consensus have tried and failed. We're going to try them first. So we can offer you advice. If you have a, something that you are, that is in an overlap between jurisdictions, or it's something you need, some technical advice on in your area, you can ask for advice and we can give it informally or formally. Come and talk to us. The structure of the committee is that we self-nominate people that we would like, that we think would work on the committee and we give the DPL a list of um, candidates and the DPL nominates them. Since the last talk at DevConf 22, um, the decisions we've made are 
some like administrative housekeeping bugs. We added new members and we voted for a new chair. This happens automatically when we add new members. We decided to reinstate the user merge file moratorium. These numbers are Debian bug numbers, by the way. If you, if you look up that bug in the Debian bug tracking system, you can see the, the issue being raised, the discussion on the issue, the voting on the issue, and the decision. Um, the decision was to reinstate this moratorium. User merge continues to come back, and we'll talk about that more in another talk today. Um, many issues that come in front of the technical committee don't get closed with a formal decision. We were asked to decide whether PAM should adopt the DPKG root environment variable, but the issue resolved itself before we needed to come to a decision. We were asked to hold, to hold the um, slash user merge transition until DPKG issues could be fixed, and we decided to let the existing measures stand. Um, there was a query about atomic updates, and it was closed because it wasn't really at a position that the technical committee could make a um, useful contribution. There were some other bugs that come in front of us that we don't even take as far as coming to formal resolutions because it's obviously just too early, usually, or not actionable. The committee member, as I mentioned, the committee, as I mentioned, has a um, term limit for the membership. So the, it's a somewhat complicated rule that was built to phase out the old um, team members when we started the uh, rolling membership. But on the beginning of each year, anyone who served more than three and a half years is set to expire that year. And so this is the current expected retirement of all the committee members. Team members can choose to um, leave the team earlier. They don't have to serve their entire term, but it's obviously nice to keep people on for longer, and we don't have to look quite as hard for new members. But we're always looking for new members. We need one or two new members each year to keep the membership, to keep the committee full even if everyone does their full five years, and maybe more if people retire early. According to the Constitution, we're allowed to have up to eight developers developers, but unusually at least four. It's not that scary. Uh, don't worry too much. <laughs> not all our bugs are awful. Some of them are hard. User merge is in front of us right now, and the, the process on, around it is not straightforward. It's required um, it funded time outside Debian to make process progress on it, but generally the issues are more straightforward and you shouldn't be too scared of volunteering to join the committee. The work really is usually more social than technical. It's the technical committee we're making technical decisions, but the reason these decisions come to us are because people come to a social disagreement. And so the work is really about resolving these disagreements. There are technical um, Yeah, these disagreements are usually based on something technical and they're technical arguments at play and we're coming to a, dis a technical decision but there are technical people who have multiple opinions for presumably good reasons. They just see things slightly differently and they would balance the solution slightly differently. This usually means the decisions aren't easy. They're hard and probably not popular. So it's a somewhat political job. What the useful skills to join the committee are to be able to work with these kind of conflicts, to have empathy with the people who are bringing something to the committee that is going to be going to be difficult. It's going to be exhausting for many of the people involved. The pro the bugs raised in front of the committee are going to cover all areas of the project, so you need to be able to handle areas you're not familiar with and quickly jump into. Um, problems that you're not used to dealing with. And yeah, it's also going to involve mentoring project members and how, how to work with each other. Ideally, as in all roles of responsibility, the project, you need to be somewhat responsive to, so that we can come to decisions. People have to reply to their email within a reasonable amount of time. So if you are way overworked, this probably isn't the right job for you. 
and you need. <laughs> but generally, those are the kind of people who end up on the committee anyway. Um, and you need to be able to handle, uh, yeah, difficult situations and not try and calm things down rather than inflaming them. We would love to have more diversity in the committee, like everything in the project. We end up being a bunch of, yeah, old white guy developers. I'm, I'm afraid that's the, the project. We, we can do better. So please, if, you, if any of this sounds interesting to you, nominate yourself. If you can think of someone else who you think would be a good fit for the committee, nominate them. I only joined because someone told me I think you'd be a good fit for the current committee, and I thought, yeah, you know what, I could probably do that. I've got the time this year. It, asking someone makes a difference. Come and talk to us if you have any questions. We, yeah, just project members like anyone else. I'd like to open up to Q&A now. Um, I'll switch to the Jitsi call. And I see everybody's there. I can turn that off. Does anyone have any questions for us? Hello, I'd like to add something if I may. Please. As well uh, um, as, well as um, resolving disputes between developers and all that sort of more contentious thing uh, where someone is going to go away unhappy. Um, another, new, another thing that the technical committee does um, and that um, I think perhaps would be in a better position if people made more use of is um, people can ask us for advice. Um, a couple of times uh, while I have been on the technical committee, in fact, um, I have asked the committee for advice with um, thorny problems in packages that I maintained. And um, I found that to be really useful. Um, in, in, in situations where there's a bunch of options for what I could do, none of them is exactly great. Um, but I need to choose one of them because there's a problem to be solved. Um, it has been, I, I found it useful to get the, commit, the committee's advice on what the least bad option is. Any other questions? Sean, I think you might as well speak. I don't see anyone else lining up. Well, just to add to what Simon said, um, in, in addition to just requesting advice, you can delegate a decision to the committee that's in the constitution. So if a decision is definitely yours, but for whatever reason, um, it feels like too much weight on your shoulders to look at, um, then you can hand it over. And that's something the that hardware gets used, even less than asking for advice. Uh, and but it exists as part of the governance procedures that we have. And uh, you know, it's it using more problem. Um, Is there anything on the IRC, Andy? Nothing there? No, you must have done a really great job. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else we should talk about while we're here in a room? I, yeah, I don't have any topics I can think of. I know there are always debates about how much the technical committee should be trying to involve itself in things versus getting involved by the project, but yeah. Oh, I see a question. Oh, green mic. Sorry, not so much as a question, but something that goes unsaid all of the time. Those of us who are not on the technical committee genuinely recognize the worth you guys do and i think i speak on behalf of the rest of the project when i say thank you very much for your effort and hard work it is appreciated particularly when things get uh to use stefano's words thorny so thank you thank you it's appreciated in turn yeah, and i guess lots of Thanks 
go to Helmut specifically for picking up the actual work in, in the user merge uh, task and getting that forward on the technical side. Uh, I think it's fair to highlight that this work is had by friction and it is getting quite blurry because I'm serving both on the technical committee and working at that capacity on that matter. So I need to distinguish doing design work from doing actual technical committee work. And that has become quite blurry, unfortunately. But you're still doing it. Yeah, and it, 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 it's never become a problem. Um, we've always handled that exceptionally well. I see another question. I think, I think for, for all of us, it's um, we, we, we need to distinguish a bit between things we are doing as individual developers and things we are doing as members of the technical committee. Um, because we're all the sort of people who have hopefully informed opinions on a number of things that are going on in the project. Um, and usually if we get involved in a mailing list thread or fixing packaging or whatever, we're not doing so with our technical committee hats on. Yeah, constitutionally we're kind of limited in what we can do with technical committee hats on, so it's if someone comes to us with advice, it's usually going to be a, here's my personal opinion, and then here's how this would play out if you brought it to the committee, here are what the options look like. Um, yeah, so building off of that, the like prohibition and the constitution of doing design work always seemed really weird to me, because like, you know, it's been stated, you're all very experienced people, you know, who have, you know, good technical skills and stuff, so like, does the restriction on not doing design work like still make sense, and is that a good thing to have? Helmut, you might as well. Yeah, I think it is still useful uh, because the purpose of the committee is choosing available options. Uh, doing design work only helps in so far as providing a path forward, but then we still have nobody implementing it. And without an implementation, there still isn't anything to choose. So while I'm doing design work on user merge, and actually implementing that, it only works as long as I or someone else actually does the work. So the technical committee is there to choose among available options, and that's actually a recurring theme of recent issues referred to the committee that what has been requested is so blurry or underdefined that it's not actually something that could be applied or being used as is and is more of a vague concept that is lacking preciseness to be able to implement. Simon, I think you were next. Yeah, um, I think the sorts of people who are good to have on the technical committee are usually the sorts of people who you might also want doing your detailed design work. Um, but I think it's important that, for instance, in Helmut's work on Merge User, um, the detailed design work that he is doing is being done by him personally or him as a Frixian um, contributor, rather than on behalf of the technical committee. And the technical committee's involve, um, involvement in it, um, if, it come, if it comes to the point of needing to, our involvement would be something like, um, Helmut wants to make this change, a relevant maintainer doesn't want it, do we overrule that maintainer, yes or no? Um, and it is quite important that the, that the answer to that question is, no, you should do some third thing that we've just thought of. Um, because then, if, if, if we try and do that, if no one's actually implemented that third thing, 
it's not much use for us to assert that it's, it would be the right thing. So the, um, particularly on questions of overruling a maintainer, um, the ideal form for a question like that is uh, here is a patch or a merge request. Um, I would like to apply this despite the maintainer's objections, yes or no. Because that gives us something very concrete to make a decision on. Great. Sean? Um, right. Uh, in the problem, things can get stuck for different reasons. And one is sort of a, a kind of difficulty choosing between known options, right? It's what the teasing is for. But as Simon says, not having a solution implemented is a quite distinct way in which things can get stuck. And if we didn't have the thing in the Constitution about detailed design work, it, it's completely clear that we're the ones responsible for unsticking the first kind of problem. Um, but if it wasn't so clear that we're not the ones responsible for fixing the second, then you get sort of this amorphous, you could get this amorphous situation where it's like, oh, maybe the TC can help me implement this, or maybe they can. And, it be clear as possible so that people can get on and do things um, to make, make problems go away, hopefully, down the road. The question is whose responsibility something is, is important. Helmut? I think the original question has another aspect that we all have evaded answering so far. <laughs> Uh, and that is, should there be a body doing design work in Debian? Because what currently happens often is that someone wants to implement a change, then they just do about it, and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't and causes conflict, and then the committee is invoked. But we don't have this kind of vision of where we want to head in technical terms like having an upfront decision of Debian becoming user merged, for instance, it's more like, oh, we have this experiment, and then we make this experiment the default, and then we disable the alternative, and so on. And this kind of technical direction is an aspect that is kind of implied in your question, I hope. And that's something that we really don't do at this moment, uh, maybe uh, Debian should adapt in a way that such work is possible in some way, or then I'm not sure that the technical committee as a body is the right one to do it. Maybe it is. Simon? I think um, in, some, in some distributions, particularly commercially backed ones, um, with the, that have actual employees, uh, it's quite easy to have a, a governing body that decides we are going to do this because you know, some, someone's manager can just tell them to do it, which is not really something you can do in a volunteer organization. Um, we, we can't require maintainers to do particular work. All we can do is uh, require maintainers not to block other people's work in in their corner of the project. Um, and when, when we're overruling a maintainer as the technical committee, we are not really telling that maintainer to do particular work. What we're, do, what we're doing is more like stopping them from blocking someone else from doing work on that maintainer's packages. Um, in, I, I think the uh, the really skulls structure that we used to have would maybe be a better model for um, things that we want to do as a project, as a goal, and deciding whether it's something re we really want and um, what what level of bug is um, is appropriate for it, uh, whether we can NMU for it, that sort of thing. Um, the release goals thing kind of died because it was one of the release team's many hats and the release team have enough on their plate just with trying to get releases out, um, never mind having 
particular uh, administering big goals for those releases as well. Um, but I think if we were to have a more of a like a steering body sort of role somewhere in the project, um, release goals would maybe be a better template for that. And perhaps, I, I, and I don't know whether that whether that should be a technical committee thing or some different team. Sean? Uh, yeah, just to note a small thing. When you read the Constitution, it sounds like, and I'm never asking in this, um, but it sounds like the intention is for the DPL to provide something like this sort of leadership. Um, and we've just clearly decided over the whole project since then that the DPL has got a bunch of other stuff they're going to focus on. Um, and that's fine. And I certainly agree with Simon that the new school sounds like uh, a, good, a good template if you want to go back to that goal. But just to explain why the Constitution says that we're not going to do it is because it seems to ascribe that to the DPL, um, at least. That was, seems like the intention. Yeah, I, I think our DPLs used to have more of a project leadership thing in their, um, a project direction goal in their platforms that has fallen away over the years as it's become, a, the DPL role has become more bureaucratic. There's so much bureaucracy to do that there isn't any time to try and r get momentum in the project to complete hard projects. The, <laughs> The DPLs are already overwhelmed, so this probably needs something else, but I, I don't know where it comes from. I'm aware that the closest equivalent of a technical committee in, um, in some, some other distributions doesn't have quite the same role that we do. For instance, I am Fedora's steering committee. Um, I believe has more of a leadership role or in, um, I don't know whether they actually define goals themselves, but certainly people, they, 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 they seem to have the role that our release team had for release goals when those were a thing, that people can write a proposal for, here is what we want to do for the next release or in three releases time yeah. or whatever and put that forward as something that the steering committee will give their blessing to or not. Helmut? That sounds actually like a workable thing to me. The problem with release goals and the steering committee is that it imposes work on someone. Mm. And the way to address that kind of could be voting upon them. So we could define release goals again but rather than having a team pick them, we could just jar them with the effect maybe of saying bugs that go towards this release goal are considered important, and thus NMUing them is okay. And the default is that maintainers should apply these and sort of like that. And the purpose of voting here is capturing a sufficient body of developers actually pursuing that goal and saying, yes, I want to do work towards this goal. And without having people to back up goals, they don't make sense to me. So you're saying that um, in that having enough developers vote for a release goal kind of implies and at least a reasonable portion of the people voting for this um, are committing to actually do the work. Therefore, we can assume that it will get done. I, yeah, I think that could work. Maybe we should try. I think like I wanna, th thank you for mostly answering the question. The, the one thing I would push back on is that like we can't ask people to do work in Debian because they're volunteers, because people ask me to do work all the time when they file bugs against stuff, you know? And like, even if it's not serious severity, if it's coming from a release team member, I know what that means. Like, you should probably fix this, you know, otherwise down the line, you know, that might, you know, cause problems. Um, 
And I think they're like, you know, people who don't know that work needs to be done and are willing to do work, you know, if someone was filing bugs. Um, so, yeah, and the other thing is like, I think, you know, if, you know, like mul multiple people submit proposals to the technical committee and the technical committee, you know, like refined them, there is a reasonable chance that people would be willing to implement that. You know, I think like discounting that right away, saying like we're not 100% sure that someone would be be willing to implement it is not necessarily a reason to discount the entire concept. Simon, you want to take that? I think it's important to distinguish between asking people to do work and requiring people to do work. Asking people to do work is something we do all the time. Um, requiring people to do work is something we can't. Um, and if someone, if someone else who values it higher steps in and does that work instead, then great. The work got done, the goal has been achieved. Um, but we can't, we, we can't, we can't demand that the maintainer of, of, of a particular package do some specified thing in it though. This even applies when we're dealing with a dispute. If someone wants a package maintainer to do something, we can tell the package maintainer, you do it, or we take your package away from you, but then we have to give it to somebody else. Somebody has to be there willing to do the work. And usually, right. these are the hard packages that nobody wants to be the person doing that, and they just want the maintainer to do this one little thing. If the maintainer is not going to do it, there's not a whole lot of power we really have. This would be different with if someone was to bring to the technical committee a large scale design thing that covered multiple packages and wasn't based on a dispute, I think that would be quite a different kind of discussion. But I'm not aware of any of those in the technical committee's history. There must have been something. I can't think of anything. I mean, we are the only body who can change the maintainer of the package. Um, but as you say, you could change it to someone as well as from someone, and the, the power handy never gets used because you don't know uh, who to change it to. Um, I know one thing I've wondered about is whether moving something to the QA team, right, and that would certainly count as a use of that power, making something maintained by everyone. Uh, there may be situations where where we or, or to be unafraid to do it. I'm not, I'm not saying in particular situations, um, but it's worth mentioning that it doesn't have to move to someone. Just taking, because there could be situations in which taking someone out of the maintainer field is what's needed, and we are the only people who can do it. Okay, any more questions? Anyone want to add something? Okay, yeah, are we done? I think we might be. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Steph. Steph, no, thank you for the lovely thank talk. You. Thanks to the rest of the committee the for the team. Making, making it an a jitsi call.